Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Promoting Safety Engineering, and uh, this is Toby, your safety engineer. And today we're going to be talking about pressure vessels, separators, scrubbers. And um, if you like what you hear, please do come back because there's a lot of oil and gas talk, especially more on the safety side. So you can subscribe to my channel, Promoting Safety Engineer. And um, yep, so let's jump right in. <clears throat> so what's a separator? A separator is a is a pressure vessel used for separating a well stream into gaseous and liquid components. So we have various kinds of separators. They're sometimes they're vertical or horizontal, like this are horizontal uh, vertical separators, and this is what the internals kind of look like. And then we have the your normal horizontal ones. These are more common, but they all have their own various uses. And they are very popular in the oil and gas industry, especially upstream. When the oil is gotten from the ground, oil comes out as a mixture of water, sand, gas, and oil. So as it comes out, you need to separate it into those respective components. Into You need to get the water separated and get rid of it. You need to get the oil flowing separately and store that and also the gas to pass it further down and compress it to or money compress it so it's sellable. So um starting off I'm just going to show you what it looks like on a PNID uh, which is where the design actually starts. So we're going to be looking at a PNID and in-depth view. Um, so this is a drawing, a PNID drawing. A uh, PNID is a piping and instrumentation diagram. This is a PNID drawing of a pressure vessel. And this is a test separator package. Now, um, a, a separator could either be used as a test separator, meaning you want to test the the qualities and the properties of the liquid coming out of the well and so it comes in here and you test the pressures you test the temperature the force of the well everything you can test it in the test separator and actually have some samples of the oil look into it so that's and then it could be an lp separator which means low pressure and that would be the operating regime would be somewhere between one bar to four bars and um, then you could have a high pressure going from about 10 bar and above. So uh, it comes, the way it operates is that it's just a normal laws of, should I say, nature, which it operates by. You know, oil is normally lighter than water. So water flows to the bottom, oil stays on top, and then there is the gas flow, the gas is what's left at the very top so the oil is in the middle so uh you have it let me go back to the picture to give you a little in-depth analysis so the oil comes in at the inlet from the wells and then you have a slug some sort of slug catcher or where which put forces the oil and water down so the oil floats and stops the water stays below and then there's a sort of where in between so when the wa the water stays below here the water oil floats on top and it goes over the wear here and comes down here and flows out so you have oil here you have water here flowing out here and you have the gas since gas is very very um, light it flows out the top now keep in mind that this is gonna there's gonna be this is gonna be a pressurized system so the inflow is going to have a lot of pressure. So the gas going out would be able to flow out quickly. And this also. Now, the way this operates is this will, the oil section would have a level gauge and the oil section too will have a level gauge. And that's, and this would be connected to level, level, level control valves. So once the water is to is go, dropping low and you have too much of oil in here the uh, the level control valve for the water closes and lets the water rise up and once the water hits somewhere about here 
the oil it will have lifted the oil up and then the oil starts flowing out from here now in case the oil to gets too low from the, the level control valve further down the line would close and then it will allow the oil build up and then there's also the gas outlet now let me go back to the PNID and kind of show you how that operates if you look at this this on this separator is only for oil and gas the, the fluid mixture comes in here and then it's separated and it's held back by this way which now flows this way and then the oil goes out meaning most of the fluid we should have coming into this separator would be a mixture of mainly oil and gas and then the gas would go out through here and you have um, you have pressure control valves here that determine how much of the uh, depending on the pressure it sees in the vessel will determine how much of the gas is needed or it could be controlled by the gas export header connected to maybe a, a compressor and that would have control the level the control the pressure control valves determining how much gas to send or it could be connected to the pressure vessel which would determine how much gas to send further down the line and this is the level the level control valves also once this goes too low the level control valves would close down and make sure that there's a minimum level of oil in here and then when the oil gets too high this would open up more and allow more oil to flow through it's a simple um should i say works with gravity and normal laws of nature also let me look at another drawing here for you yep yeah this is also same this would take the oil out and send it to the side vessel it could send it to pumps it could send it to another vessel further down the line remember it's a pressurized system and then the mixture comes okay this is an lp separator uh the operating regime is um okay normally okay it's designed for 15 bar that's design pressure but the operating pressure would be somewhere between two to three bar fluid flows in here the well fluids and then this is the gas outlet the gas outlet is always on top flows out this way and this is going down to gas exports so this are the pressure control valves which dictates how much it flows further down and these are the level control valves also yep so bear in mind that also we have vertical separators which look some something like this and this also uh, could be two that could be separated into two which is water and which is um, oil and gas or it could be water oil and gas and uh, here are samples from vet or vertical separators this is what they look like in the PNIDs now uh, most of the time they're salt vessels or they're scrubbers and scrubbers are used to knock out fluids or liquids from a mixture whatever liquids are entrained in a fluid coming in it knocks them out and it's drained out while the gases go out through the top so that's generally how scrubbers work it's to remove all the fluids in it because you don't want fluids going in uh, if you want your gas to be dry or uh, and doesn't have any liquid entrained in it then you would have to use a lot of knockout drums or scrubbers uh, as we call them and um yep so you don't want of course going to your flare you don't want liquids entrained in in your in the fluids going to in the gas going to the flare you don't want liquids in them uh, because that would give you a smoky flare and also you don't want liquids in your compressor if you're going to compress it compress the gas because that could damage your compressor you want the gas to be as dry as possible so the liquids will come out the bottom and the gas will go out on top 
and that would be drained out or sent to a condensate stabilization unit. And um, this is what this is kind of what they look like. These are control valves. These are level control valves, which determine how much liquid stays in here. This is also a picture of a horizontal of a vertical vessel. This is a horizontal one. Now, bear in mind that the way it works, there are lots of instrumentation in in them. Sorry about that. And um, the instrumentation, it's mainly to, this are the level, um, this is a level trip and the level, uh, level indicators. So these are the instrumentations that talk to the level control valve. So this is high, this is low. So when this is high, you want this opening up more. And when this is, when the, this show indicates that it's low, you want this closing up to increase more of the liquid level. You don't want it totally void of liquid because then that means there would be a gas bypass which would go further down the line and you don't want that. So this is what controls it. This is the instrumentation. And then this is also a trip. The, tri the way the trip works is uh, it's mainly for to shut down in case there's a process offset. Maybe you have too much liquid going up filling this up or the pressure or uh, the liquid that's the level this is the level uh level trip you if this has lost control or there's a process offset and you want the level to stop then this would close the inlets the inlets sdv this is an sdv for the outlets also it it's necessary to have them you can see here it has osd1 osd Two and EST, meaning if you want a unit shut down or a plant wide shut down, this are the vessel, these are the valves that would actually close up, and then uh, this would be isolated. Uh, also, a good number of them have BDVs on top, which open to the flare because you don't want your PSVs popping every time. Or uh, bear in mind, <clears throat> so the equip the instrumentation you normally have are pressure gauges which control the pressure uh, pressure um, indicators and pressure pressure trips which control the pressure control valves and then the level indicators this is a level gauge this is this would be local you one would or it could be con connected to the control room and then this is your um, level indicator which would tell you okay you have which controls this? Do you have too much level? Do you have too much? And this is, there's a high and low. Then there's a high, high and a low, low. The high, high means it's very high, meaning we have to trip or it's very low. We have to trip also. So this is what controls the shutdown system. Whereas this is what controls the level control valve. So that's the instrumentation we find on them. Then also these are the drains during maintenance. We come here, we shut down the system and then we open the valves. They're closed. That's why they're blacked out. There's three valves. These are drain valves and you can see this goes to temporary settling tank. So you want to drain it and um, you open it during maintenance, swing open the spectacle blinds and then the whatever is entrained in here would come out and that would enable you to be able to open the manhole in the vessel and go in for maintenance. Yep, uh, let me show you more pictures of what they look like. Yeah, so this is a vertical one. It operates kind of almost in the same way. This is where the inlet is. The vertical separator, the inlet is here. It normally has a heater at the bottom in case um, to properly separates the oil and water so the oil floats on top and the water comes down to the bottom the water goes out this way the oil goes out here and uh, this is the inlet and the gas goes out on top so this inlet brings in the mixture of fluids from the well or from whatever other equipment is coming from and then it's heated here separated into water water goes out here and then the gas goes out on top and then the oil goes out this way. This is also a picture of a separator. These are all the instruments you see around. Lots of valves, lots of drain valves, isolation valves, control valves. 
this um, le ledge on top is for the pressure control is for the pressure relief valves, the PSVs or pressure safety valves. That's what this is also. You can see this. This is like an ideal picture of what we're talking about. This is the inlets where the fluid's coming from. This is the large manhole, which you open when you want to maintain. This is the gas outlets. These are the pressure safety valves on top in case you hit a process offset and the pressure in the vessel becomes too much. And then these are all the other connections which allow you to drain, allow for your level control valves, your pressure control valves further down the line. Yeah. So, yep. Thank you very much. That's it. Talking about separators. If you, this is me <laughs> when I was working, doing some inspection on the separator. I was checking out the certifications and making sure everything is up to date. So, yeah, this is what it looks like, really. Sometimes, of course, yeah, I forgot to talk about it. The mister, the mister holds um, entrained liquid. It stops it from going across because, as I said, you want the gas as dry as possible. So thank you very much once again for coming to my station. Name is Toby Famutimi. I'm a safety engineer. And uh, please subscribe to my station promoting safety engineering. Thank you very much. Do have a lovely day. Yeah. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.